This is Carlin Borisenko, and you are listening to the Actively Unwoke podcast. Well, it's been an interesting, uh, you know, let's say like day and a half. I've had an extreme high. I've had an extreme low. Well, not actually really that low, but I was going to record today's podcast talking about how I nailed a school district to the wall. I'm really proud of this. The Exeter Regional Region Cooperative School District in New Hampshire, which is like the bougie woke part of New Hampshire. It's out near Portsmouth. It's like near the seacoast. Like this is like where the bougie liberals live in New Hampshire for the most part. I nailed their school district to the wall for violating openly and brazenly uh, New Hampshire's divisive concepts bill, which is like the anti-CRT law. It basically says that you can't teach some elements, though not all, related to critical race theory in the state. And I had kind of been keeping an eye on this school for a while until I was kind of tooling around their website the other night and started finding documents related to their diversity program. And I was like, oh, this breaks state law. And so I put together some journalism and uh, I did expose that the school is breaking the law. And I then reported that to the state of New Hampshire because I'm not just going to do journalism in this regard. I am actually going to do some activism. I filed an official report with the New Hampshire State Department of Education as well as the Human Rights Commission and basically said this school district is openly and brazenly breaking the anti-CRT law. And anyway, I was going to do this podcast today basically talking about how I did that and because it was all a bit based on publicly available information. Any parent can go into their, their school and their school's website and do exactly the same thing I did. And quite frankly, this school should have been caught a lot sooner. And so I'm going to use this as an example of how parents can actually research school websites to find out exactly what their schools are doing, just like I am. That's part of the point. I want to teach people how to do this stuff. But, but, as soon as I posted the Twitter thread talking about how I caught this school in the act of breaking New Hampshire state law, I got permanently banned on Twitter for my main account, Dr. Carlin B. And for some reason, people think that's more important than me catching a school district breaking New Hampshire state law. And so we're going to talk about that. And then I promise in the very next podcast, we're going to talk about the school and how we can research our schools and things like that. I promise I'm going to come back to that. It's actually the most important thing. But let's talk about my permanent Twitter ban. Well, first off, I don't actually think that it's permanent. I don't. I think my account's going to get reinstated because to be quite frank, Twitter really doesn't have a leg to stand on on this one. They literally banned me for a tweet in which I listed state government email addresses with the whole .gov and everything, and they're saying that I released private information. Government email addresses are not private information. They are not. They are government email addresses. These email addresses were publicly available on the State of New Hampshire website. They are the email addresses that you send documents to when you are reporting schools for breaking state law. So if Twitter tries to ban me permanently for posting government email addresses, public information, public email addresses that are on the state of New Hampshire website, I mean, I think Twitter's going to get their asses sued, to be quite frank. They're fucking government email addresses. They're government email addresses. Sorry. They're public information. They're not private in any way, shape, or form. And Twitter is going to know that. I'm fairly certain. I'm fairly certain Twitter will be smart enough to understand that you cannot ban someone for posting private information when the information they posted wasn't private. So I'm pretty sure the account's going to get back. I'm I'm really not actually that worried about it. But you know what? To be honest, even if it doesn't, I'm still not that worried about it. I didn't really feel much of anything when it happened today. I was like, eh, all right, like, whatever. 
Um, part of the reason for that is I do actually have other Twitter accounts and the Twitter account that I'm really working on building up right now is my actively unwoke Twitter account. Just like this podcast. If you're listening right now and you're on Twitter, follow me at actively unwoke. And that's the one I really care about right now. And I really want people to hear this because sometimes people think they think, you know, I don't have a platform. I don't have a big following. Therefore, nothing I post online makes a difference. And and all that stuff. And I have, I think there's like 2,300 followers under the Actively Unwoke account. On my Dr. Carlin B one, I had like over 70,000. But on this one, I have like, you know, not not 20,000. Oh gosh, did I say 20,000? No, 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 nowhere near that. 2,200, 22, 2,300, something like that. 2,000, couple thousand. Not really much of anything. Anyone can get a couple thousand Twitter followers. It's not that hard. And so I have a smaller account right now. Okay, I had a big one for a while, but I have a smaller one right now. It makes no difference. And I know it makes no difference because I've seen time and time and time and time and time and time and time again when smaller accounts easily go viral. Going viral is more about just posting content that people are interested in. That's all it is. It's about poking, pro- posting content in an attention-grabbing way. Sometimes you have to be a little outlandish. Sometimes it has to be a little extreme. Sometimes you have to characterize things in the most crazy way you can possibly characterize them because, you know, if it bleeds, it leads sort of thing. But you don't have to be a big account to do any of these things. And to be really honest, I I don't know. I really questioned, you know, I've wanted to quit that Twitter account for a while and I almost felt like I had an obligation to keep it simply because I was using it to retweet my smaller accounts to get people to move over to those accounts like the people that wanted to be engaged in that type of content in an effort to do really more niche content on the separate individual individual accounts because my main account was really a mishmash of everything I was doing I was doing like spirituality discussions I was doing politics I was doing news I was doing CRT I was doing personal stuff. I was doing, um, you know, defending myself against being bullied on the internet by this roving horde of psychos that stalk my every fucking move. I was doing all this on my main Twitter account. And it was all kind of a mishmash, and I think that people were confused by it, and they maybe followed me because they like one thing, and then they're getting 16 other things, and, and you know, it's very confusing for them. And they say something like, you've changed so much. I'm like, I've never changed. You're just getting content that is not the content you signed up for. And then they would whine and complain about that. And I'd block them because I don't got time for whining and complaining on Twitter. If you just don't, if you don't want to follow someone, then don't follow them. But don't whine and complain at them about what they're posting. It is a huge waste of time. No one, this is a side note, no one is obligated to post what you want on Twitter. There are a lot of people that need to hear that. No one is obligated to post what you want on Twitter. Stop whining when someone doesn't post what you want them to post. This is These, these are the types of things you experience when you have an account that has over 70,000 followers. I am really done with the whining on Twitter. I'm done. And I think I got done with that account a while ago. I also think that Twitter as a platform is actively making people insane. I'm not actually exaggerating about that. I think that Twitter is driving people insane. I have been venturing off Twitter lately to go and hang out on Minds or even Gab. Right now, dude, the words I never thought I'd say in my life. Right now, Gab is less insane than Twitter. Gab used to be the pinnacle of toxic insanity. It is not anymore, at least for me. And I have like 14,000 followers on Gab. At least for me, it is not the most like toxic platform anymore. Twitter is far more toxic than Gab. Far more toxic. I've actually been enjoying some, some of my interactions on Gab lately, and I never thought I'd say that. I used to get attacked by white identitarians all the time on Gab. So maybe, maybe this is, you know, for the best. Like, I really, I don't want to end up like other people I see on Twitter who just lose their goddamn minds. And they, they really, truly believe that everything, everything is about Twitter. And that the only things that happen in life 
are things that happen on Twitter among the people that they specifically follow. And what I've seen get really dangerous is when there's like a circle of people that they all follow each other. And it's like maybe like a couple dozen people, but they all follow each other and they all interact with each other all day, every day. And they slowly but surely become completely unhinged from reality because the group that they are, the, because the people that are creating their reality are the groups that they're in. It's the people that you talk to. And so if you're only spending all day, every day talking to these couple dozen people on Twitter, those couple dozen people are going to have a tremendous amount of power in order to form your reality and how you perceive the world and what you believe is true. I have watched people turn into absolute unhinged lunatics in these types of groups. And I never want to be that. I never would want to be that. I think it's so sad to watch that happen where people honestly believe that this website that less than 2% of the population uses is real life. I really do wonder if Twitter, especially when you have a larger account, is it more a benefit or a curse? Well, and I guess it's not even for just larger accounts, too, because like I said, it's only like a, you can have like a couple dozen people. You can be a really small account and be in a group of this couple dozen people who just talk at each other all day, every day. And Twitter is going to be incredibly dangerous for you. It might actually even be better if you had a bigger account, because at least you would be hearing more voices. But especially with smaller accounts, they're probably not having as many interactions with as many people. So I'm not really upset about my account getting banned. I'm really just not that upset about it. And I, I'm sure partially it's because I really do think that this appeal is probably, I have appealed it and like I think that it's like very likely that the appeal is going to reinstate my account. I mean, again, it's just like they were, they were public email addresses. There's no, there's no universe in which I actually posted private information. That didn't happen. But even if it doesn't, I'm not that upset about it. I'm just not. And, you know, I've been going on to Minds and I've been going on to Getter and I've been going on to Truth Social and I've been going on to Gab. And of course, I'm on Locals. And, and there are other platforms in the world that, to be quite frank, like, are just not as insane. I don't know why it's specifically Twitter that makes people insane. I don't know if it is the maybe constant, uh, constantly striving to go viral and constantly, you know, trying to figure out, um, like, like how to get the most attention or the most likes or the most retweets or what have you. I, I, I don't know, like, why, I, I mean, that must be the reason that Twitter liter literally makes people insane. It's like that constant pursuit of fame, that constant pursuit of that that dopamine hit that you get every time you get one of those notifications. It's got to be chasing after that that really does drive people to lunacy. Because I just don't see that happening on other platforms. I really don't. Well, maybe Telegram. Telegram is a whole other... Telegram is like a whole other toxicity that I can't even... I cannot even get into right now. But I just wanted to reassure people that I'm fine. Life goes on. I have my actively unwoke Twitter account. Listen, I have a couple other th other Twitter accounts that maybe you should follow. I'm just saying. I've got a couple other Twitter accounts that maybe you should just follow just in case. Actively unwoke, at actively unwoke, would be a great first one to follow. That is the account for my book. That is where I'm posting stuff that the Unwoke Army is doing, and I, I suspect that people in the Unwoke Army will be posting stuff too. I, I have no problem with distributing responsibility of multiple people posting on the account when it makes sense. I also have an account called Unwoke X that is the official account for a business that I started technically filed with the state over a year ago. Well, about a year ago. Um, so that's that. that is a that is a business account that is going to be launching in conjunction with the UnwokeX platform that I'm currently working on right now. 
Don't worry about what that is. I'll tell you when it's ready. But you might just want to follow it. It is U-N-W-O-K-E, the letter X. So that's one. That's a good one to follow. Now, if you're looking for takes on life and human behavior and maybe philosophy and spirituality, I know sometimes we can use a break from fighting back against the woke and we can think about bigger life picture life issues. I actually think it's better to think about bigger issues when you're fighting back against stuff like this because in the same way that Twitter will drive you insane, fighting back against woke insanity will drive you to the same type of madness if you aren't very, very careful to take care of yourself. So if you are looking for content like that, you may want to follow an account for the Disenrage podcast. And the account is Disenrage. D-I-S-E-N-R-A-G-E. Disenrage. So this is a podcast about spirituality and life and and just different human experiences and things that I think will lift people up and give people hope and give people inspiration for all the possibilities of life. So those are some accounts you can follow if you want to. And, um, you know, make sure you're following on other platforms too, guys. We need to start diversifying our platforms. I have worked so hard to get people off of Twitter and I only got a fraction of of people who should have gotten off Twitter because everyone's always like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, like whatever. But no, get on Minds. Minds is really good. I'm really enjoying Minds, actually. Minds has a cool kind of like hipster vibe. And I'm I actually turned off the Twitter um the Twitter uh like auto posting thing on Minds like a couple weeks ago and I've just been posting there myself. I've been posting exclusive content there. I've been engaging with people there. I really like it a lot. Check out Minds. I'm also going to be giving Gab a second chance. I mean, listen, I think Andrew Torba is a little crazy. I do. I don't like the Christian stuff, but it's his platform. He's allowed to be an insane Christian on his platform, and they're allowed to do Christian things, and I can just choose not to interact with them, and that's cool. But I've had some okay interactions on Gab lately, and I know I'm not going to get censored on Gab. I will never get banned on Gab. Maybe it's time to uh, try to rebuild like a Gab account. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, You know, there's one thing I appreciate about Gab is like, I feel like Andrew Torba has his head down and he's really focused on building this thing. And he's like, I mean, he's obviously deeply committed to it. It's like the head down going forward, no matter what, they're going to figure it out. I believe that, well, I don't like the Christian stuff all the time. Again, he's allowed to have his beliefs though. So it's really not my place to kind of judge that. It's just a personal preference thing. But like, even with 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 that, I like the commitment. I may not agree with what he believes, but I like the commitment with which he has embraced what he believes. And he's like, "F you! This is my company. I'm gonna do what I want. If I want to make a crazy fundamentalist Christian country com- uh, company, I'm gonna do it." You know, good for him. He's living his best life. I hope that he's happy with what he's doing. I mean, he seems to be. I don't agree with all of his decisions. I certainly don't agree with with uh, some of them. But again, it's not my life, man. It's his life. So I'm going to give probably Gab a second try um, and like spend a little more time on there. And I've been on Gitter and True Social. I'm not really seeing much happening on Gitter and True Social. I'm disappointed. I liked the vibe of Gitter when it first started kind of like after like Joe Rogan joined it and people actually started getting on it and using it. It was actually Gitter was really fun for a while. I like Gitter's vibe. I, I, I respect that Gitter has, it just works. I think they're doing a really good job. They seem like they're building it out very thoughtfully and very pragmatically. Um, I don't agree with all their decisions, but that's fine. I don't have to. And, you know, I think it's fine on there. True Social, I'm on there, but I'm kind of like meh about the whole thing. Um, I, I, you know, I like the Trumps on there, but I think that that's kind of like, well, Trump's on there. James Lindsay was interacting on there. Um, now that he's been banned on Twitter too, um, I don't know. There are some redeeming qualities, but I also feel like I'm just like, meh, like whatevs. So that's where I'll be. And I also, of course, I'm on Locals. You can always find me on Locals. Locals is a great place to interact with me. KB.Locals.com. On Locals, you can actually get on to private Zoom calls with me if you would like to. Um, and those happen on Mondays and Wednesdays. Those are for supporters only. So you can find ways to support my work at actively slash support. 
That's going to give you links to my Patreon, in which you can get exclusive merchandise for supporting. It's also going to give you links to my locals, which I definitely recommend. Um, You don't get merch from locals just because locals isn't uh, set up that way. But if you want the merch, you can go to Patreon and you'll actually get the exact same benefits on Patreon as you get on locals, uh, which is like two Zoom calls a week, um, book club, uh, bitchcraft, uh, just like the supporter discord, stuff like that. That's an option. You can uh, subscribe to my Substacks, my Substack, Carlin, K A R L Y N, dot Substack dot com, which is actually the actively unwoke Substack. I just used my name because I did. Um, so that's just the way it goes. But you can find links to that on actively unwoke dot com slash support. You can also find the Red Pill Diaries, which is another kind of stream of conscious essay writing thing you're gonna have some angsty essays you're gonna have some happy essays mostly angsty essays right now i'm feeling very angsty about my red pill experience right now and so that's what i'm writing because that's what i'm feeling it's these are essays they're supposed to have emotion they're not supposed to be factual articles but they are a very kind of like raw stream of conscious essay about my red pill experience and and what i think about and and because i think that Things like this are important to document. I just do. I think they're important. I think that there are not enough authentic human experiences in the world. And um, so I'm documenting mine. For better or worse, I get in trouble for documenting it. But I think it's important that we document authentic human experiences so we have a record of that. What was it actually like to be alive at this crazy time and in a really odd position and, you know, doing activism for probably one of the most important things that is going to happen to this country um, and the history of it. Uh, So, you know, so that's what, so I have the Red Pill Diaries uh, substack, which is, um, which is redpilldiaries.substack.com. And you can subscribe there as well. So guys, life goes on. We keep our heads down. We keep focused. And um, next podcast, we are going to focus in on what I said on the beginning, which is I'm going to tell you how I figured out that the Exeter Region Cooperative School District was breaking New Hampshire state law and got enough evidence to report them to the state for it because what I did was no different than what any parent can do using just the internet and taking some time to do it. It took me probably about probably about six hours straight, maybe a little bit more from start to finish to put everything. And this was just I was doing it by myself. Um, So you can do this in a night. I very literally did this in a night. And I wish I had looked into it a year ago because I could have found, I think, all this information a year ago. And I just didn't bother to look and no parent bothered to look either. Or maybe they did bother to look, but they didn't know what they were looking for. So that's why I'm going to do these uh, series where I'm going to teach you guys how to find this stuff. Because if I can create more people who want to learn how to find this stuff, then, um, then... That's going to be better for all of us. So that will be our next podcast. But thank you for allowing me to tell my uh, thoughts and feelings about getting permanently banned off the Twitters. Well, for one account anyway. And I hope it was informative and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I hope you subscribe. And uh, again, please consider supporting my work at activelyunwoke.com slash support. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.